Hello! All the small things are sold in HMV. And look, here's some of them now. It's world's smallest, as this happy ant with this tiny globe is telling us. So the idea here is they've taken old toys and novelties and made them smaller than they were. Like considerably smaller, hence why they're calling them world's smallest, because there's never been a smaller version released. One assumes. Look, it's good old Strotch Ermstrang. Now, this was a toy, very, very popular with the kids back in the 70s, I want to say maybe late 60s. Basically like a strongman thing, although admittedly he looks less like a strongman and more like the melting senator from that 90s X-Men film. Um, but it was a much bigger toy, as you can just make out in the corner there, as 70s boy rips it to pieces, or attempts to and fails. Either that or he's a tiny little elf, and actually the Stretch Armstrong's the same size. No, it isn't. That's why it's world's smallest in it. Look at a bit Aquaman. Like, not like, obviously, the recent Justice League Aquaman. It's not Jason Momoa, but like the original ones. No wonder if that was on purpose. Probably not. Probably modelled on Charles Atlas. That'd be a more sensible one, wouldn't it? Anyway, yes, actually works and contains no latex. So that's nice. Yeah, there's not much else to say on these. Um, you can try these positions. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting Bull and Giant Pretzel. Don't try those in real life, or your trip to the hospital will be speedy and probably fatal. Right, I've cut all the uh, packaging open so we can just pull them straight out, and yeah, he's a rubbery little lad, isn't he? Um, yeah, it seems to have the goo in that these original things had. I'm not entirely sure about the ankles, they just feel like they're made up of different rubber, to be honest. Why are his arms so small? He is a very oddly proportioned gentleman. Also, he can do this. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like I can pull it out with extreme prejudice and it's not going to break, so that's good. Can we try Sitting Bull? Get his knees up under his chest. Okay. Put those up there like that. And then wrap those around. And th there we are, Sitting Bull. Good oh no, they were supposed to come back. It's fine. Look, Stretch, we believe in you. We believe you can stretch to many positions, but never your head, because that's a hard piece of plastic while the rest of your body is rubber. Pewing, pewing, pewing. And he's back, ready to professionally wrestle. He's got that kind of look to him, hasn't he? Anyway, good work, Stretch. I fully believe you are the world's smallest Stretch Armstrong. But is this? <gasps> The world's smallest Hot Wheels. Hmm. Hot Wheels being little matchbox car things from America. You all know what hot thing, hot things. You all know what hot things are. You put your hand on them and it hurts. You all know what Hot Wheels are. This is apparently a Turbo Fire 1969. Does that mean they did multiple ones of these? Fastest metal cars in the world. Ooh, it'd better be metal. Yes, actually works. Hmm. I'd be worried if a small toy car didn't have wheels that went round. But uh, there we go. Gear, here we are. Collect them all! Collect a lead to And then put them on a load of dimes or something. Or are they nickels? I don't know. I can't tell from here. But what I can tell is, this is bloody small. Oh, there we are. It has come out and it is now among us. I quite like that it comes with its own interior packaging. That's pretty cool. Um, so we flip this down to get out. Miniature cars, California style. Exclusive torsion bar suspension. Go faster, roll farther on Mattel Hot Wheels action sets. Wild California custom colors, mag wheels and power bulges and pipes. Collect them all. Well, fair enough. That is a very hard piece of plastic. It's not like a standard blister. Uh, I presume we can, yep, pull that down and come to me, my tiny Hot Wheel. Oh wait, there's a bit of plastic or something holding it in there. I think I've got to remove a tab. Yes, there we go. Oh, it's so small! Like, farcically so. Looks kind of cool. Looks like a car from, I don't know, a 70s sci-fi series. UFO or Space 1999 or something. And it's a very lime green colour without any other paint application. The little wheels go round. Let me try on a hard surface. Yeah, works perfectly. Nice. Now the question is, how much smaller is this than Micro Machines? Well, I just so happen to have one here. It is considerably smaller. Look at that. And is it made of metal? Hang on, I'm going to bang it on my teeth. Yes, it is. Very good. Um, well, they lived up to their thing. This is the world's smallest Hot Wheel, I suppose. Though I suppose they could argue, even if it was bigger than a Micro Machines, they'd be saying, yeah, but you know, this is a Hot Wheels and not a Micro Machines, so this is the smallest Hot Wheels. And you'd be like, oh, you are so disingenuous. But no, it's fine. It is fine. The Hot Wheels does move around much better, I find, on a uh, flat surface. But hey, 
it's still all right, this, isn't it? And it does the job, if the job is being a very small toy car. Do you know what? They've had these in Poundland for a time, and I've been looking for an excuse to show them. Nano machines from our new best friends at Urban Blazers. Basically, Poundland micro machines. You get one, two, three, four, five for a pound. And they've got speed boost integrated ball bearing. Are they rubbish? This is my question. I've always wanted to find out. This pink one shall be the one that we shall judge harshly. Let's have a look. Uh, it's very plasticky, as you would assume if they were five for a quid. Um, it's got the ball bearing in there, as it says. That's interesting. The little wheels don't really spin around very well. Oh, because it spins on the ball bearing. Yeah. Yeah, put a little bit of strength behind it and... Yeah, that's all right, actually. I mean, I wouldn't be massively impressed if it was expensive. But for God's sake, you get multiple for a pound. Was it five or six for a pound, actually? I'm going to have to double check. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I was right in the first place. Size-wise... Slightly bigger than a micro machine, much bigger than the Hot Wheels, obviously. Interesting. Anyway, let's put all that to one side because now it's time for World's Smallest Action Man! Dun, 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 dun. That's not music in any way, shape, or form associated with Action Man. With binoculars and lifelike hair. Yes, actually works. What does it do then? So, if you're not aware of Action Man, here's one now. Hello. Wait for it. Let's do the eagle eyes. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Really weird pose he's fallen into off the side of the sofa there. It's like he's coquettishly knocking on a door or something. Anyway, real hair. Oh, the head doesn't... Well, the head's glued on. That's weird. Hmm. Broken action man. Anyway, as you can see, an awful lot bigger than this one, to say the least. But yeah, this was like the first fighting man action doll or whatever. Um, Americans will, of course, know this by the original name of G.I. Joe, for Action Man, at least originally, was basically G.I. Joe in a different package, because G.I. Joe wouldn't mean a whole lot in England, so they changed the name. And then later, they had its own sort of Action Man-specific stuff, and then it span off into Action Force. This is getting far too complicated for a video on something else. So... Let's look at Little Beardy Man. What else can we tell from here? Very little. It seems to be using the 90s Action Man flashing, but having kind of the late 60s, early 70s design of it, which is interesting. Right, out you come, mate. Can we get the binoculars as well? Oh, yep, we can, because I've snapped it. Hooray! Look at the binoculars first. They're a bit crap, but they fit. Do they fit into his hand? Well, that's a question. Bit of articulation going on there. Yes, they do, because everything's a bit rubbery. That's quite good. So... Arms go up, legs go Oh, for God's sake. <sighs> Not going to sit in his Jeep in that position, is he? Bloody hell, action man. But, oh, God. Oh, drop that. Well, that's gone forever. Um, look at the face and the way the hair is attached. Not the best. It does kind of look like he stuck a magnet in his skull and dunked his head into a big bucket of iron filings. Um, yeah, not amazing, to say the least. The thing that gets me is... They're saying world's smallest, but it's not really that small. They've had much, much higher detailed figures, like 30 years ago in this scale. Look, here's a mask figure. Slightly smaller, in fact, and far, far better and more detailed. Hell, um, Dino Riders as well, another one of that kind of uh, ilk. Again, slightly smaller and much more detailed. I mean, if you want to go really small, you've got scales like bloody Manta Force, which were tiny. You could have had a tiny wee action man like that. But I suppose if they did go that small, the hair and beard thing would have been even worse. I wouldn't have gone for the beard myself. I think that is an unnecessary step, which has made it look far worse. Oh, if you're wondering how big it is next to an old-style Star Wars figure, here's Lobot. Hello. I was in Empire Strikes Back and I'm weird and I look very 70s. Such puffy sleeves. Fashion icon. Um, yeah, there we go. World's smallest action man. I mean, technically, I suppose, unless they've produced something smaller in the past, which they might have done. There's been a lot of action man stuff over the years. Although in my head here, I am conflating action man and G.I. Joe, so, because they're mostly they're the same. Oh, God. It's such a tangled web. Let's look at something nice and simple, like <clears throat> the man of pack, the packed man himself, Pac-Man. That was the worst intro anything has ever been given. So this is apparently the world's coolest. They're not claiming it's the smallest for some reason, which is interesting. I actually didn't spot until I just brought it out on the sofa. So, hmm, hmm. Features real game sounds and light up screen. OK, well, I've got to say this is the smallest um, arcade cabinet keyring I've seen 
that just makes noises. Um, I haven't seen a smaller one. I wonder if this world's coolest and world's smallest flashing is a bit interchangeable. Right, what does it do then? I've pulled out the tab thing. It's set to on. Good. Amazing. Oh. Doesn't seem to matter which button you press. Uh, it just lights up a screen in the back and makes a noise. Ooh, annoying one. What more would you want? Oh, it's done the start one again. Well, it's a fun little key ring thing, isn't it? But I've got to say, these were relatively expensive. Not when I bought them, they were all reduced. And for effectively only a few quid more, you could get one of those ones that I reviewed um, a few years ago. That is a lot bigger, isn't it? However, this thing does actually play Pac-Man and does it pretty well. Even the weird little joystick works okay. Sorry, I'm uh, covering the screen with my giant thumb. But you get the idea. Yeah, you, I mean, hmm. Just <sighs> slightly pricey novelty compared to slightly pricey novelty that you can actually play a game on and have fun with. Meh. But there we are, it is a lot smaller and that's what they're going for. So, put you to that. Anyway. Before we were sticking all our 10 P's in Pac-Man, we were fiddling with our Rubik's Cube. World's smallest. I swear I've seen ones this size in the 80s, but maybe this is one millimetre smaller or something. So it is an original Ru Rubik's product, as well it should be. Um, yeah, it's one of them cubes, isn't it? So it comes all put together. I mean, surely you all know what a Rubik's Cube is, but let's cover it very briefly. Basically, it rotates and you can mess all the colours up and oh it's not actually a key ring oh i approve because that means it uh, moves easier actually yeah it kind of spoil it if it was a key ring wasn't it um and there are people who are really good at solving these called cube meisters or something because there's a certain sort of algorithmic way if you think properly you can fix it all or whatever and there we are you can sit oh it's a bit it is a bit fiddly which i do expect for something this small but it's not bad it does move properly i think you want to do like a speed run on it or something but there we are you mess it all up then you demess it, and that's a Rubik's cube. It's quite good fun in its way. Um, something to distract you, something to keep your hands busy. Um, thing that always springs to mind for me was the way people used to cheat with them. Most people would peel the stickers off. Bad idea. They don't go back on well, to say the least. But my method was always to actually disassemble the cube. I don't know if I can do it with this one, and then put it back together. Because frankly, it was a bit boring twiddling the bloody thing around. But there we are. I always thought Rubik's Snake and Rubik's Clock were a lot more fun. Now we can have the infinite fun of having a mask figure sitting on a Rubik's Cube. I mean, I would put the Action Man on it, but look at his legs. Look at them. Stop looking at them, it's weird. Well, there we go. That was a fair selection of the world's smallest things. Are they all actually the world's smallest things? They do seem to be, yes, except this one, which they didn't claim was the world's smallest, so fair enough, but it seems to be to me. What is it the world's smallest one of? Oh, see, we just don't have the answers. I feel like you might have got something like this smaller in a Gashapon machine in Japan or something, but there we go. So, I think we'll give the last word of this video to Lobot. What am I? Light boy boy